Once again, President Biden's energy crisis, we have met the enemy, and the enemy is us. Joining us now to talk about it, Alex Epstein, founder and CEO of the Center for Industrial Progress, and he's got a new book out, author of Fossil Future. Alex, uh, you're Rick Perry's favorite analyst. I mean, on the air, he booked you for this show, <laughs> yeah. which is very cool. Anyway... I appreciated that a lot. Yeah, no, no. Well, and he's a great man. Um, so I've said at the top of the show, and I, I want to talk to you about it, I, my argument now is, all right, Putin has done a lot of bad things. Don't get me wrong. But regarding energy, blaming Putin for high energy prices, his energy production is almost back to where it was pre-war. We are undersupplied oil. We are undersupplied gasoline because of the uh, Biden attack on fossil fuels. I want to get your take. I mean, the numbers, Alex, are showing this right now. That's what's so stark. Yeah, I agree with you. I would just extend it to the rest of the free world. So what we've had for the last 15 plus years is a move against fossil fuel investment, fossil fuel production, fossil fuel transport. And now people are suddenly surprised that we have lower supply of fossil fuels than we want. But we have governments around the world committing to the rapid elimination of the fossil fuel industry. So that is the root cause of the problem. And the solution is nobody's going to like this, but we need to get out of the Paris Agreement. We need to reject all these net zero commitments and we need a long term commitment to fossil fuel production. Is the absence, Alex, the absence of that long term commitment to fossil fuel production? Is that what's holding back the energy companies? I mean, the rig count has not gone 100%. up as much. I mean, you know, they're, they're, they're worried now about their balance sheets and their capital and their shareholder return. Uh, is that a function of Biden's war on fossils? I would say Biden and, yeah, much of the rest of the world. I mean, you can include the U.N. as part of this. The whole global anti-fossil fuel movement also include the whole ESG Movement. I mean, these companies want to make money. Oil prices are high. They would love to make investments. They'd love to drill as quickly as possible. But this is an administration that ran on, I guarantee you, we're going to end fossil fuel. And they haven't retracted that at all. They're just upset for the moment because they have bad polls. But they need to retract and reject their whole agenda. Then you'll see the spigots flowing. You know, we're still uh, roughly one million barrels short of where we were in oil production pre-pandemic, okay, million barrels short. We're also short on gasoline production. Now, if the Energy uh, Information Administration, the EIA, uh, inside the Energy Department, they were predicting at one point that we would get to 15 million barrels per day, I think by 2023 or 2024. Suppose we had gotten, you know, we were back to... Uh, 13 right now on our way to 14. What would that do to oil prices? What would that do to gasoline prices? Putting aside Vladimir Putin, what would that do right there? It, it's hard to say exactly, and I don't like people who claim to say exactly, but we know about the you know supply of oil is it has a very big impact on the price when it goes up and when it goes down. And so everything you can do to liberate oil production makes a very, very big difference. Uh, in your research, by the way, how do you treat nuclear? I think nuclear has amazing potential. What we've seen, we had the experience of the 1970s where nuclear was a very low cost and reliable source of electricity. And yet what happened, the green movement virtually criminalized it to the point where it's about 10 times more expensive to try to make a nuclear plant today than it was in the 1970s. Why isn't it cheaper? Technology has evolved. The prices of the materials haven't gone up significantly. This stuff should be cheaper, but it's criminalized by the very people who claim to care about CO2 emissions. This is one point I think Secretary slash Governor Perry got from my book. This is not a movement about carbon. It's a movement that believes that all human impact on Earth is evil, and that ultimately leads to opposing all forms of energy, opposing fossil fuels, opposing nuclear, opposing hydro, and also opposing mining, which is the entire basis for solar and wind, which require record amounts of mining. Yeah, so if they had their way, Alex, there would be no growth, complete stasis. I mean, that's the way I read this. Um, the reverse. Yeah, I mean, they're just, they're anti-growth, period. I know they're anti-capitalism, but they don't want any progress, really. This is like a dark ages thing. And it should be called the regressive movement. I really resent this being called progressive. Mm. It's because the human beings progress by impacting the earth, making it a more abundant and safe place. 
and yet they're telling us that the fuels that make the world so good should be retracted before we have viable replacements. I'm all for alternatives, but they need to be proven cost effective. You can't, you can't uh, eliminate things that are working because that harms billions of people and it certainly harms the security of this country. All right, we'll leave it there. Alex Epstein, thank you. Good luck on the book. Appreciate it very much.